Good morning, and welcome to our live stream. My name is Sam, and beside me is my colleague Sophos, and we're joined today by Skype uh, with our Australian marketing manager, Dino, who's also an overclocker down under. On this live stream, we're going to talk about overclocking and show you guys step by step how it's done. So, uh, today's stream is about overclocking, and Dino, uh, why do we overclock, and what's the benefit of over overclocking? Okay, so the idea essentially is to force your computer to operate faster than what the manufacturer is specifying for that particular component to operate. Right. So today we're going to use an Intel Core i5-6600K. It runs at 3.9 gigahertz. We are going to overclock it beyond 4 gigahertz. So what we're essentially trying to do is increase performance. Mm -hmm. uh, also, that will happen at the expense of heat uh, and voltage increase. So we will need to increase uh, uh, voltage a little and the heat as, as a result that will also you know, increase noise depending on the, the cooler uh, design that, we, that people use. But essentially it's a free upgrade. Right. Uh, you're getting much better performance when you overclock by 20 or 30 percent. So that's what we want people to do today. Just get comfortable with it and enjoy a, a free upgrade really. Right, so it's a pretty standard system and you get a free upgrade. Now, one more question, is it safe? Absolutely, this is uh, the way Gigabyte is designed, it's hardware and software, we make it very easy to do so. So uh, today we're going to use uh, um, uh, our, our software package essentially to show you how to do it easily through Windows and it's very safe. So d you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Okay, great. Okay, so X to you. Let's see it. All right. So I will uh, I will launch CPU Z, uh, which will show us uh, our CPU frequency. Okay. So here you can see our CPU is running at stop frequency. Right. So I'll launch X to you now. Okay. And here you can click the Run Benchmark button, and it yeah. will start run. Okay. Uh, da down at the bottom right, you can see our CPU frequency. Right. It's totally stock. So here we go. So right now, uh, it's clearly uh, doing something to the computer. So XCG is actually the most heavy benchmark uh, nowadays. Okay. So it loads your CPU one hundred percent almost. Right. And uh, it's AVX to benchmark, so it's very very heavy. Right. It's like, so. Uh, running Linux, Linux at the background. Here XTU finished, so our baseline yeah. score for XTU is 992 points. Right, okay. Uh, we will also run uh, a 3D benchmark. It's uh, from Futuremark Suite. Okay. So it's called Skydiver. It's Skydiver, actually okay. testing your PC in game standards. Okay. All right, so we're on Skydiver. So Skydiver, it looks like it's supposed to simulate a very demanding uh, game, right? Yeah, Skydiver is actually uh, for mid-range PCs like the one we have here. So it actually simulates a game right. pretty much. So I'm going to, to start running Skydiver. Right. So again, our CPU is a fairly standard CPU. It's just a, a simple uh, case skew. So it's not anything special. Uh, it's just a Core i5. And so again, you don't need hardware that's overclocking specific, you just need any kind of CPU or hardware. Uh, so yeah, the idea, yesterday we built a PC and uh, so obviously uh, you know we need uh, some way to test this PC so you guys are now obviously testing the 3D side uh, yeah. and we have the 2D side as well so these are not necessarily the only ways to test uh, but uh, it's a good indication of what to expect and, and then when we increase the settings we can see the difference, right? Right. Uh, and that, that essentially, this is what um, uh, a lot of people kind of fail to do if they try to overclock. They don't really uh, spend a little bit of time to make sure that they are stable. So you, you do have to make sure that the systems are stable. So if, effectively, we are testing stability even with this 3D setup right now. So it looks like we have finished that benchmark. And so we have a score of 23,090. Okay, what's next? So. Right now we are going to overclock our PC to 4.5 gigahertz. So there are plenty ways to do that, mm -hmm. but we prefer the most safe and easy way to go with. 
uh, which is easy tune uh, easy tune is actually a gigabyte build utility okay you can download it from our website that's right yeah uh, and it's actually very 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 safe there's no worries uh, you can do it at home by your own it's okay okay so, so what's the first step I'm going to to launch easy tune okay from here I think it's important to mention that uh, uh, the people should uh, download and install the App Center itself. App exactly, Center, yeah. which is on, on the right side, actually will automatically update all the software. So, so whenever there is a new update, it, it will prompt you to uh, update to the latest version. So sometimes, you know, if there is a bug fix or whatnot, uh, App Center, very uh, easy to use app, very important one. You should definitely always have that on your system. That will that will give you the ability to download essentially any uh, application, including EasyTune, which we're showing now. All right. So uh, you can actually overclock every part of your uh, of your PC, most of them. Right. So, but the most uh, the parts you need to overclock most are the CPU mm -hmm. and your memories. Exactly. Okay. So memory vendors uh, ha have already built-in profiles in memories. Right. Uh, they called XMP. So you can actually load the XMP, which okay. is a very easy way to overclock your memory, and you don't have to, to worry <coughs> about any any other timing, right? So I'm going to the advanced DDROC tab okay. on this tune, and here I can actually enable my XMP profile, which is XMP profile one. Okay, for me. and that is for the memory. Yeah, that is for the memory. So okay. Here I will click apply, but in order to be applied, the profile need to be applied. Uh, our PC needs to reboot. Okay. So I will click apply, and I will reboot our PC. Okay. Um, so one important thing we want to bring up is what we're doing is all in this app, right? It's not in the BIOS. Yeah. There's there's no BIOS. Uh, there's no BIOS tuning at all. EasyTune will do everything for you. So so later we will also show um, how to. Uh, recover from a failed setting or if something stops working, if people don't see a screen, we'll show people how to reset CMOS. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very easy fix basically to back to standard settings. So in, in case anyone is worried about, you know, um, creating a problem for themselves, we can, we'll show how to do it easily to get back to stop. Now our XMP profile is loaded. Right. So we're going to actually overclock our CPU. There are plenty of ways to do it. You can choose one of the ready profiles we have in EasyTune. Okay. Uh, but you can also do it manually. Okay. So we will s show how to do it manually here. So you have to go to the advanced CPU OC tab in right. EasyTune. You click there. Uh, here I have, uh, it reads my last profile, which is not loaded. So okay. I have to click reset in order to go back to default settings. And I will start start building up my profile okay so as i said before we are going to to hit 4.5 gigahertz right so uh -huh. all i have to do is push uh for 45 uh, uh on the on the cpu multiplier you can see all the all the cpu cores are 45 now okay but you also have to push the voltage right in a safe way of course of so course it's all very safe. We are not going to overdo it with voltage, so I will select 1.35 volts, which is a safe uh, a safe range for Skylake CPUs. Okay. So here we go. So, so essentially, when when people are looking for an overclock, uh, always look for uh, uh, maybe 10 or 15 percent increase in voltage. Uh, anything beyond that. There's really not a lot of point uh, trying to push harder because all you're doing really is just increasing the heat. Particularly, mm -hmm. if you're going into summertime like Australia is right now, and uh, you yeah. know Northern Hemisphere obviously is going into winter time. But uh, uh, you don't want to over, you know, over like overdo the voltage, which will just affect your temperature. And if you don't have a great cooler, like the cooler that we're using now is quite basic. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So if, if you have a water cooler, then you can look at increasing the, the voltage some more. But uh, yeah, try to stick to that 10 to 15 percent increase for regular regular uh, PC. Right. So now I have also to click apply in order for my settings to be applied. Okay. So 
Now you can see here, actually my CPU is up to 4.5 gigahertz. That's right, and yeah. And my memory is on XMP profile, which is 3.66. Okay, uh, so we, we do have a small increase in speed. So what are we going to do now is actually run XCU again, and run Skydiver again, and right. compare the performance with the runs we did before at stock settings. Okay, so we want to compare the performance to see exactly how far we have an increase with our scores. Exactly. So okay. I'm starting XTU. So I notice we also have a higher temperature. Of course, when you overclock your CPU and uh, you raise your CPU voltage, actually, right. you get higher temperatures. But okay. Skylake architecture is actually uh, not so bad, so you won't see a, a very high temperatures on your CPU. Right, but so right now we're at like 63 degrees Celsius, and that's still a very safe temperature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so what with Intel chips, so this is how you would, for example, check temperature that I mentioned uh, before. So when you do an overclock, or even when you uh, start with, you know, standard settings and run uh, XTU, you can check the uh, temperature of the CPU, and when it loads up, if you, in, at stock frequency, if you see temperature above 80, usually it means that your CPU is not, or your CPU cooler is not mounted properly. So I, I would recommend readjusting it. So when you're overclocking and you're reaching 60 or 70, that's okay because that's, you, you know, you are increasing the voltage, uh, so essentially you're increasing yeah. the heat. Yeah. So it might seem, you know, quite hot, but still actually in the safety zone for CPUs. Great. So I see here, Sophos, we have a score of now 1250 marks. Exactly. So we have actually raised our score from before uh, over 250 points, which right. is a big uh, points difference for XTU. Okay. That actually means that our PC now performs much be better than before. Next we are going to run Skydiver again. Okay. So so I just want to touch on Skydiver testing. So mm -hmm. for example, um, uh, uh, we are trying to simulate, uh, for example, Counter-Strike Global Offensive here. Okay. Right. It is a very similar uh, uh, sort of test that we would do if we were just to test Counter-Strike. What we're trying to do is eliminate the the low FPS. So for example, when you know, you're know you uh, you know attacking B site on cobblestone with smokes, 5v5, a lot of action, a lot of grenades, a lot of guns, uh, the frames can dip sometimes uh, mm -hmm. significantly. Uh, so basically what we're trying to do is eliminate those low frames. Hitting 300 frames doesn't necessarily make any difference, but when you're dipping in below 150 frames on 144 hertz uh, screen, you, it can actually affect the fluidity of, of your game and your right. uh, gaming action and your reaction time. So essentially, overclocking or giving that boost and killing off some of the kind of power saving features or or ha have, uh, giving the PC ability to run at say 4.5 gigahertz will actually uh, eliminate some of those low fra frames per second. And that's what ruins people's experiences. Okay, great. So we have finished our Skydiver benchmark, and we have a score of 26,118. So here you can see actually an increment of almost 3,000 points uh, from la our, la our, our first test, right? yeah. yeah. So that means again that our CPU uh, performs much better than before because right. we keep the GPU uh, at the same clocks. So this so would translate into extra frames exactly. uh, in the so game. Exactly. If you uh, this benchmark actually simulates a, a game. Okay. So that means you can actually get higher FPS in your game system. Right. Gaming system. Okay. So one of the things we want to stress about overclocking with EasyTune is that it's safe. And so a lot of you guys are worried uh, about what would happen if you have a crash. You know, would it damage your CPU? Would it kill your board? So on and so forth. So Sophos, uh, why don't you show us what happens when we do have a crash? So in order to overclock our CPU manually, as we said before, we we'll go to the advanced CPU OC tab. Okay. So now the point is to push our CPU at, at the higher frequency. This particularly right. CPU can go, right? So we can keep the voltage at the same at the same rate, so 1.35, or okay. we can increase it. And we, we should start increasing our CPU multiplier. Okay. So let's say I'll set 1.4 volts. It's still a safe 
uh, voltage drains to right. go with. I apply. And I'll start uh, pushing higher the multiplier. So we will go to 46. I will apply. Okay, we're still and good. Yeah, as okay. you can see it's set. And here you can also check the CPU frequency. Right, so we're at 4.6 gigahertz. Exactly. And we're still alive, it's still good. So I'll go to 47 multiplier. Okay. So 4.5 gigahertz. So it's still alive. That doesn't mean your PC is stable, right? But it it hasn't been crashed yet, so okay. we will keep going higher and higher. Four eight. Uh, Four point nine gigahertz. You can see here. Let's try five zero. Uh no. Oh, PC and it's crashed. Ah, there we go. There we go. So, yeah, nothing to worry about since. <laughs> Uh, you can wait for this screen to be completed. You can see the percentage of the of the co uh, the, the who does need but to But more importantly, start. there's no smoke pouring out of your CPU, no. right? <laughs> it's still on fire. There's nothing like that is going to happen any anyway. So it's really really safe to go with. When people are overclocking, uh, they should first increase the voltage of the CPU. So we had it at from 1.25 to 1.35. And then go in 100 megahertz increments on CPU. Don't jump. Don't do big jumps. Say 500 megahertz up and see if it's going to work. You're better mm -hmm. off doing small test, small right. increments. Then run next to you. So go from say 4 gigahertz to 4.1. Run next to you. Make sure it's stable. Go to 4.2. It is a time-consuming process, but you will only do this really once or twice. Once you are satisfied with your results. So yeah. when you get say 4.5 and 4.6 works and 4.7 works and 4.8 crashes, you can drop down to 4.7 or even 4.6 just to be 100% safe. That's that's basically essentially the idea behind doing this exercise if you want to overclock. Okay, so on today's live stream, we did some overclocking. You guys can see that it's very simple and very straightforward. And you know, when you do have a crash, it's not a huge deal. Right guys? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching our OC stream. Uh, if you want more of this, follow us on Facebook and on YouTube, and we'll see you later.